Uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah, sorry for the delay. So we're going to have uh, uh, the uh, we're going to have electricity, and uh, I think I believe today is the last day. Yeah, just a small part which we are remaining to to finish off. Then when we are done, that's it for electricity. Yeah. So uh, before I begin, we're going to pray. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before the throne. Our God asking you to be uh, with us, O oh God, and also asking you to impact in us with our God so that uh, I might be able, oh God, to teach and also impact understanding uh, into my listeners, O oh God. In the name of my name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So, yeah, so um, uh, this is the last part of electricity. And uh, sorry for the delay. Yeah, there was just some misunderstanding. Yeah, and uh, I I logged in uh, right. Um. So um, I think the others will just will just will just join us. Others will just join us. Yeah. Are you able to see my sharing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so um, last time we were looking at shampoo electric, we looked at the topography. That's how a shampoo is uh, presented. And uh, when I'm talking about a shampoo electric, I said you should always uh, be thinking of an electric area which is uh, created and this electric area can only be created by a source which is where the force is uh, uh, the force is, is coming from is a, a particle a charge particle which uh, causes a force so we have to put in mind of that source and uh, when you are talking about sharp electric you just calculate the the force which is caused by a source so basically for sharp electric, you can get the force which is uh, exerted by one charge. So, um, yeah. So we talked about the topography. Topography. We looked. Uh, we looked uh, uh, at the linear the sharp line of uh, of what of uh, sharp. So linear the sharp is uh, the line which are presented around a charged particle. Yeah, around a charged particle. If it's positive, if it's negative. So we said if it's positive. The lines are going outward, and if it's negative, the lines are coming inward, like they are, they are entering into the charge. And we say that when you bring this, uh, the the the, uh, the 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 uh, the same charges together, you see that they will be repelled. And when you bring the uh, different charges together, you see that there will be an attraction. And uh, after bringing the same charges, if you bring the same charges together, we say that you can. Uh, either uh, this rappel can create some form of a curve. And a tangent of this curve, we say that is equal to the Champ electric. Also, if we bring the, the, the different charges, you see that the an attraction where there's this curve, when you draw a tangent, which is going um, towards the direction of uh, how the, 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 the curve is going, you see that you, uh, it, it will be equal to the sharp electric, which is denoted by what? By A. So those are the things which we looked at. And we also looked at, uh, we, uh, after looking at those, we looked at sharp paper on distribution the charge. So we started with uh, when you have distribution linear. So distribution linear is when the charges are distributed uh, uh, in a line. 
when the charges are distributed in a line, how do you calculate each uh, shampoo, shampoo electric? So when you you are when you are supposed to when uh, you are dealing with such questions where of distribution is made, we say that if for you to calculate each uh, shampoo electric, you have to uh, first of all you have to know since uh, the charges are found almost everywhere. I can say I, I can say that fire are found everywhere in the line, it means that there is DQ, which is always changing. And you say that for distribution name, is lambda is equal to DQ divided by DL. And we say that uh, to make DQ the subject to the formula, so we just uh, multiply lambda times DL is equal to what? DQ. This is the formula which you have here. So the DQ is, um, it will be included in the, uh, in the formula of, uh, your your sharp and when you're calculating your sharp, which is de is equal to your k times dq dq. This is the dq uh, lambda dl divided by r squared. So uh, as 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 I said, the first thing when you're calculating the sharp, you have to change your your dq. That's why here dq they have just equated the dq is equal to lambda dl, which is they have just replaced here for dq. Then you integrate, you start solving. That's how you do it for a uh, distribution in A. So we talked about uh, that. Then from there, we uh, yeah, we did this question. When did when did that this uh, this uh, when did uh, do yeah, when did with this application, application two, where we did some calculations, all those things. Yeah, so today we're going to continue with it. Champ clear bar on distribution, the charge continues. So distribution surface. Heat. So distribution surface heat also is, is the same, but you have to see where is the distribution made. So um is it made uh under a surface area or, or what? So if it's the distribution of charges is uh under a surface area, you have to know how to calculate is what is champ electric. So the uh, the the uh, what usually changes is uh, your what your since you are dealing with they 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 will specify that are you dealing with a desit surface or desit neck most of the time they specify so you have to know where is the charge source yeah and sometimes again you can only know if uh, in your question they tell you that uh, the charges are distributed at a certain area you you know. Uh, that they are talking about it, surface heat, or they can say there, there is a surface heat distribution, which they will just say it directly, and you know that you have surface heat distribution. So when you are calculating your sharp electric, you use the same formula, but where there's DQ, you replace it by what? Uh, this is what sigma times ds. Sigma times ds. And if you remember, uh, your formula for distribution surface heat is equal to uh, your formula of distribution surface heat uh, is um, lambda uh, sigma is equal to dq divided by ds. And for me to make dq the subject of the formula, I just uh, do the cross multiplication you have sigma times what ds. This is here. So when you are calculating your sham, your sham, when you are told to change your dq, what do you do? When uh, you are told to change, uh, when you are told to, uh, to, to calculate your sharp, the first thing which you do is this, changing your DQ. So you have to know how should I change my DQ. So here, when you're changing your DQ, you have to know that if it is surface heat, you use the formula which is sigma is equal to DQ divided by ds, which, you, which, you, which is just DQ is equal to uh, sigma times what? ds. Then you do your, your, your integration. So for Distribution surface heat is too integral because you are doing with it the surface area. The surface area basically is if you calculate your surface area, uh, the formula for uh, sigma is equal to columns per meter squared. So you, if you have seen here, it's meter squared. So the surface area actually is, uh, is, 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 you know, when you are calculating a surface area, it's always in as in meter squared, meter squared, those, yeah. So when integrating for surface heat, you should always know that you use two integrals for integrating. 
then distribution volumic distribution volumic is where the charges are distributed um uh, i can say are distributed at a certain volume like they will tell you that the charges are distributed in a certain volume so when these charges are distributed in a certain volume how do you calculate a sham so here basically you have to know what replaces your dq because it varies according to a distribution which you have do you have surface do you have volumic so if you have a volumic you should know that the formula which they use is rho is equal to dq divided by what dv so you have seen the only thing which is um the one uh, i can say the the the, uh, the only thing which is uh changing here is the denominator if you see for linear distribution linear, you have what lambda is equal to dq divided dr which is linear then you if you do your question equation dq is equal to lambda times dr then for surface you have G, uh, uh, sigma is equal to dq divided by ds. And when you do a cross multiplication, you have sigma times what ds. So you have seen that it's only uh, the, 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 what the denominator which is changing. And for a uh, volume, you have dq divided what dv. Rho is equal to dq divided by what dv. Then when you do a cross multiplication, you have your answer. Then for these things like rho, sigma and lambda these they're just are there to denote the difference between the distribution surface the distribution volumic and the, the uh, distribution in a so these are basically a constant so yeah so you have to know in which distribution are you working in if it's punctual you have to know that the punctual you don't need the, the integration one punctual where you have a charge which are fixed i've already talked about this one but if you have the distributions, you have to know that there are some integral, there are some integration which you are supposed to do. So for volume, you see three integrals. Since you know that volume is always measured in cube, meter cubes and meter cube, yeah, volume is always measured in what in cube. So you have three integrals when you are calculating a sham, um, which is created in a like the sham, the, the sham which is created. Uh, 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 in a certain volume, so you have to know how to cal to calculate. So I don't know if there's anyone with any questions there. Anyone with any questions? Can you just repeat the the one you're saying about volume? Oh, okay. So uh, for volume, I was I was just saying that if you are for volume, the distribution volume. I'm just saying that uh, for volume, it's uh, the only difference is your for, for if if they have said that uh, the charges are are, are, are are in a certain volume, calculate the uh, the sharp electric for the distribution of charges which are, are, are enclosed in a certain volume. How do you calculate it? So when I'm calculating it, the formula of the sham, I said is just the same. What changes now is what do you place your DQ with? Since the charges are, 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 are all over that uh, the small volume which you are given, how do you uh, replace your DQ? So I said you should remember for the distribution volumic, the formula for distribution volumic. The formula for distribution volumic is equal to rho. The formula for distribution and volume is rho is equal to dq divided by what dv. And when you do your cross multiplication, you have dq. When you make dq the subject of the formula, you have dq is equal to rho times dv. So where there's dq, I'll just replace it by rho times what dv. Then k, I know that k is just one over four pi epsilon zero. Then pm squared is the distance between what uh, the two charged particles. So you replace with the rho dv. And we say that volume is meter cubed. So you have what? Three integral. Then here, ds is the surface. Surface is a meter squared. So you have two integrals. So this is how it is um, defined. Then uh, the length, length actually is when you have length, length actually is maybe meter and centimeter. That's why you only have what? One integral. That's why how that's what you should know. So um, when you're calculating uh, the sham, you you have to know which distribution are you given. Are you given linear? 
are you given a uh, surface or are you given what the volume is? So the only thing which, uh, the formula for all of them is the same, but the only thing is which changes is the, replace, the, replace, the replacement of dq. For linear, we say that it's dq divided by lambda is equal to dq divided by dm, where if you put the dq, the subject of the formula, it will be lambda times what? dm. Then that's where we, we that's what we replace with dq. Then for volume, we say this uh, sigma is equal to what dq divided by ds, where there is uh if we make t, dq the first formula is sigma times what ds, so replace it here. Then for volume also, you see that it is rho is equal to dq divided by dv. And where there is um if we make dq the subject of formula to be rho times dv, where there is dq replaced by rho rho times dv. So I'll say that you, if you notice that the dq is always the numerator for all of them, and what is changing is the down part. For linear is dl, dq divided by dl. For surface is dq divided by ds. And for volumic is dq divided by what? dv. Then I said uh, lambda, sigma, and the uh, rho, these are constants. Yeah, these are constants which just denotes the difference between distribution volume and distribution linear and the distribution surface. I hope it's clear now. Yes. Yeah, so um to move on, so we have Champlier part the geometry particular. So um yeah, basically this one is, uh, yeah, it's not really important, but yeah. So, Champlier by the geometry particular field infinity. So, on considering on field charge uniformly, the charge linear and rectilinear straight. Um, on chercher the value du champ électrique à que approximate the surface. On cherchait donc le retécher, le sens, le nombre de charges en deux points, M situé à une distance R de phi. So, they are saying, we consider a field chargé uniformement. So, we have this field which is chargé uniformement. The charge in unique lambda. So, here you know that you are dealing with charge in unique what lambda. So, we have this field which is charge uh, uniformment which, with the charge in unique lambda and the like, like um uh, rectilinear so when you talk about rectilinear we talk about straight so we have this field which is straight so this is the field which is straight and it is charging from when i said charging from meaning the whole field here the whole line here is it is what it is charged and this line is rectilinear which means this line is what straight so we're talking about this down line here on cherche the value du champ électrique approximately the same field. So we're going to, uh, we're, 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 we're going to uh, look for the value of the champ electric approximate at this what, field, at this line. And the on cherche donc le orientation, le sens, and the, la norm de champ electric on two point M situé à une distance R du field. So therefore we're going to, Look for the orientation, the sense, and the standard of the champ electric in all point M, which is this point here, situé à une distance R d'une fin. So um, this basically is uh, when when you have a line which is charged, then they have given you a point which is point M here. So we see that this charge line is causing an influence on what the point M here. This because uh, this the, the whole part is charged. So uh, the influence can be caused either here, either here, or anywhere. But they have to like here. They've just specified that the influence is is being caused by this point here. So when you have a point M and you have a line and a line which is uniformly charged, and they say that this line is causing an influence on point M, you have to be able to calculate each champ electric. That's basically what they are telling us. And it's just the same thing with um, 
the, the, the same thing with distribution in H, the way we calculate with distribution in H is just the same thing. So for this one, actually, it's not really important, but yeah, you'd find one or two questions on this. Yeah, and this one, if you just know how to calculate uh, questions on uh, the Champlier per geome geome geometry, particular, if you just know how to calculate, because uh, most of the questions are just similar questions. You just if you just know how to calculate the questions, you on you won't have any difficulty. So this one uh, basically is a line which is uniform charge is causing a force on point M, and they tell you to calculate this one, sham electric. And you know the formula for sham electric. This is uh, since it's uh, uh, the field charge uniform, and it's the one which is causing influence. You know it to be the E is equal to K times DQ divided by R squared, where is the distance then from there now you can try to come up with it. the formula the same way we did with the, that example for the, 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 the example for when you're given a baton, the same way uh, how we did it. So uh, for this one actually to fully understand it, you, you are supposed to do some questions, but it's not really important. It's just the same, like it's just the same procedure with the 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 density unit which we 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 did. Yeah. So here they're just saying the plant infinity. I'm plant O X1 uniform uniform memory charge avec une density surface a créer le champ sur road. So this is the champ. If you do your calculation, you find that this is the champ which you do at to create if you, you if you use density surface if you have seen density surface there's a lambda here no there's a sigma here then for density make there's a lambda here so it depends um uh, in which distribution have they said you have they told you to calculate if it is surface you, you have to know uh, which formula for the q you have to use and if it is linear you have to know which formula for the key you have to use, then you play with this for those formulas. Yeah. Then for, for what you want to want, it's just playing with the formula, just getting familiar with the formulas. If you have the idea already, you just have to get familiar with the formulas. If you get familiar with the formulas, you won't actually have any difficulties in anything. Yeah, I don't know if it's clear here or you have any questions. So for this part, actually I can say it's not really, um, you don't really need to, to panic a lot. Yeah, you just need to solve the question. Just the same procedure for, for this it uh, linear the, the one which we from seeing with the one which we solved the last time. I don't know if there's anyone with any question here. Any questions? No. Yeah, and you should always be seeing the what the y and the x axis. So it's also important in terms of calculating. So here you you have to put it in terms of ux or yeah, ui, depending you see where the point. Yeah, so here you see where your point m is. So your point m is your point m is uh, I can say uh, if you check your point m here, your point m. Is like uh, it's vertically. Yeah, your point M is uh, when you get this line here, which is denoted by point M. Point M is when you draw a line here, is uh, the point M is somewhere here. So you see that it's in the middle between Y and the, the X axis, and there's an angle which is being made here with the X axis. So you have your X axis, which is cos, and the, your Y axis, which is sine. So you have to know ND. Since this point is in a form of vertical, so you have to know if after after I've looked at um, the invariance and the symmetry, you know that which one should you we don't you don't need to go to uh, cos a cos cos u x sin sin u x. You just you can just go direct to which one will denote your answer, like which one is going to give you your final answer. So for this one, like for me, if you ask me. I would tell you that my final answer must be in uh, UY because uh, this M here is, uh, I can say is in a vertical form. It's like, it's, uh, it's parallel to the Y axis. And when it's parallel to the Y axis, uh, I know that 
just looking at this point, I know that um, just looking at this point, I know that my answer, my 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 last answer should be in vector ui. That's why here you're saying vector ui, but you understand it more when you go to symmetry and invariance. When I explain symmetry and invariance, you explain you you uh, you you what you you understand it more. So you understand why you why should why symmetry and invariance really important when you, you are doing your calculation and yeah and how do you use it without uh doing a lot of calculation just going direct on the answer and you solving it it's the i can say it's the simplest way of you solving your answers when you're given this is distribution what the, the name so you are going to uh this is, uh, when you're given distribution next surface and volume so for the, i think that one is the one which you're going to go to right now so system and the invariance so this is this topic actually is uh, really important. You have to understand it for you to be able to solve. Um, I can say uh, to be to to be able to solve uh, questions which deal with distribution very fast. For you to be able to solve questions which deal with distribution very fast, you have to understand what is symmetry is and what is invariance. So you have to understand these two. So there are sometimes where they can uh, they give you uh calculate the shampoo electric in the what in the uh 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 which is created in the cylinder or yeah cylindric so you know there you have to use coordination but in the problem is which uh in which in which what in which uh vector are you going to define it is it u theta u ho or u r so this is where now the symmetry and the variance comes in and also, if you are told to calculate the champ in, uh, for example, um, in a cube, and a cube, you know that uh, is, uh, uh, yeah, it is presented by x, y, and z, which is since a, a cube is 3D, so it's coordinate Cartesian. So you have to know in which one are you going, in which vector are you going to present it? Is it u, u x, u z, or u y? So the system and the invariance is the one which tells us in which um in which what in which uh, i can say uh in which vector uh, the, our final answer will be because you have a lot of vectors you have ui you uh for example you have uh, for Cartesian, you have the vector ui the vector uh and the vector what you said so you have to know according to where the point is being given according to the symmetry you have to know which one am i using without doing what all those without passing through all those calculation words so that when you know that you are using UZ, just go directly in your formula, uh, introducing UZ and you do your work, uh, you do your calculation fast, fast, rather than you passing through uh, the UX or, or beyond the UY, then you find that the UX is equal to zero, you prove that the, the UZ is the one. That one is a long process. Uh, and uh, I think that 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 was the process which we are we are doing. Let me just check if there's an example. Yeah. Um, this one. Are you able to see my sharing? Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you are not using the symmetry, which example am I going to give? Um, yeah, for example, for this question, 
for this question, if you want, you have this, uh, this is the point which is presented on point P. So yeah, for this question, you know that uh, um, you have your Y and your X axis. So uh, for us, for us to, to know in which vector we are supposed to use, we uh, we presented it in what? In UX and what? UY. So you have seen here that in my calculation, I included UX and what? UY. And after I did my calculation, I found that, I found out that, um, I found out that uh, for UX, the vector UX is equal to zero. So this one was canceled. Then I just used what? For the vector what? UY. So, you have seen that I I um I wasted a lot of time. I wasted a lot of time to calculate ux because at the end of it, ux it was giving me zero. At the end of it, ux it was giving me zero. So it is like I was wasting my time in calculating my ux, which the final answer was supposed to be zero. So this one I did it deliberately because by that time we haven't yet learned about the symmetry and the invariance. So when you learn about symmetry and invariance, for example, uh, yeah, for example, when you, after learning, you know that when you have a point, which is here, or this is the point, uh, yeah, this is the point, uh, point P, when you have a point, which is here, you see that this point is parallel to the what, Y axis. And you know that if it is parallel to the Y axis, like this point is parallel to the Y axis, you know that, uh, according to symmetry and the invari invariance, you know that uh, your your what your vector it will be u y your vector it will be u y. So we just see where is it um, where is it parallel from and uh, yeah you just see uh, where is the point uh, I can say parallel from uh, yeah where is the point parallel is it uh, in the y axis or in in the what in the um, uh, in the what in the in the x axis and again you see that uh, the moment this point the symmetry also you have to know that when when you're dealing with the symmetry there are some principles which you have to know you, if, uh, if, uh, if 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 you are not sure which vector you are going to use is it u y or u x for example this one you see that this point here if I'm moving it uh, if I'm moving it um, this point here if I'm moving it away from uh, yeah, if, if, if I'm moving it uh, parallel to the x-axis, you see that there'll be no change in the what? There'll be no change in the distance here. It will always be the same, but there'll be a change with what? With the distance of y here. So you see that y is affected. And also this point here, where the, this point here, if I try to uh, to cut here, you see that there will be uh, equal distance symmetry from y and x. So we're going to look more on on symmetry, how should, how do you know that I'm supposed to to use uh, the vector u y on or u x? So here, you by just looking like for me by just looking, I know that I'm supposed to use vector u y, and from there I just know which one is my vector u y. This is my uh, yeah. The, the, uh, uh, I just I just have to know uh, which one represents my vector u y. So here, since you have x y and it's making an angle here. So I know I know that U Y is equal to what since U uh, Y is Y is this line which is opposite here. I know it's uh, uh, sine theta U Y. That's what I'm going to use sine theta U Y. So this is the same thing here. If you if you yeah if you check here they use sine theta. So which is sine theta U Y. I know that I'm going to use the vector sine theta U Y the cos theta ux is equal to what? Zero. So uh, if you know about symmetry and what and invariance, I will even send the video so that you, you what you understand it, it even more. I'll send the video so that you understand it even more. You don't even need to include if you know your uh, which uh, which what uh, um, where uh, the point is defined in which vector the point is defined. You don't even need to go this far where you can get your, your for your ux you are ux what what which you know that it will definitely give you a zero so now uh going back i'll try to explain how to do it yeah so now going back to uh 
to our work. Today, I was just trying to remind you that in, in our example, we included everything, but in the actual sense, we can just do it directly. So under cement and invariance, he says, le cement and the invariance form la base de la physique moderne. So we see that the symmetry and the invariance, it forms the base of the physique, the modern physique. Et le permet, permettant d'obtenir sa calcul des informations sur les topographes du champ électrique et sa dépendance en variable d'espèce. So, the same that it permits us to uh, obtain without calculation the information on the topography of the champ électrique and the, uh, its dependence on the, 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 the variable in which it is depended on. So without doing any calculation, without going through like the one which we did, the cos U, A, the, the cos U, X, the same U, Y, then you do your calculation, you find which one is equal to zero and which one is not equal to zero. You can just go directly. That's what the, the formula is telling us. You can just go at it directly in calculating, just seeing how the diagram is presented. You can know that this, uh, the calculation of this champ electric is dependent on the vector ui so we're going to start with uh the symmetry the symmetry says supposing que distribution the charge possède on plan the symmetry alors le champ que crié est nécessaire include dans ces plans yes you are saying i don't know if there's anyone has any question yeah so um when we're talking about the symmetry, he is saying that we suppose that a distribution of the charge possess their own plan the symmetry. So you know what a symmetry is most of the time. If you have uh, this circle, for example, when I cut it in the middle, when I cut it in the middle here, uh, this side is equal to this side. If I also cut it in the middle here, I'll see that this the upper side is equal to the downside. So they're saying that if you have, you have to see first your diagram, where is the symmetry being created? So they said, suppose the distribution, the charge possess their own plan, the symmetry. Allo, the champ do, the champ can create a necessary include dancer water plan. So you have to know which one is creating the water, the plan, the symmetry. And if you know where the plan, the symmetry is being created uh, according to Uh, the first statement uh, on symmetry or what? Someone is. Hello, the one who is asking a question. Okay. So I was saying that when you're dealing with symmetry and invariance, so the first statement is the symmetry and the invariance form the best theory of physics model. So I was just saying that the symmetry and the invariance is the one which forms um, the base of the uh, the modern physics. And it permits the obtain. So it permits it permits uh, it permits us to obtain uh, without calculation the some information. On the topograph du champ electric and start dependent on variable the space. So I was saying that we have to look at uh, when you're looking at symmetry and invariance, symmetry and invariance, it permits us to find um, some information on the diagram which you have been given without actually doing the calculation. As I said earlier, if you remember in our last uh, example, we used uh, for us to find that the diagram was uh, being defined by the vector ui we have we, we are, we are uh, supposed to go through the calculations where you uh first you, you include your ux and your ui and you do your calculations after doing your calculation you find that your ux is equal to zero then uh your ui is equal to what to pi so we see there that we got our uh by ui so we say that it is this are the when you're calculating the force uh, by the time we're getting the force we said that this force is defined in the vector what is ui but for us we can calculate it uh in a simple way by knowing the symmetry and the invariance so symmetry as i said in simple term when i when i'm talking about symmetry you should know that the symmetry is 
when I cut something in the middle, for example, if I cut this, um, uh, I can say this this sphere in the middle. If I if I cut it in the middle, you see that this side is equal to the other side. And if I cut it uh, like this in the middle, the upper side is equal to the what to the downside. This is the cement which we are talking about. So when you have a point uh, which is causing an influence maybe on the center here, you have to check where is uh, the symmetry of this point. When I say the symmetry of this point, when I do, when, when, um, when I'm looking at this point, where uh, do, uh, 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 how is, uh, like for example, uh, when I'm looking at this point, how is, uh, how can I manage to divide maybe my sphere or my circle in such a way that uh, there will be a symmetry in all points. So which one defines, so you find that, for example, you have your Y, your X and your Z, you find that when I cut, I cut where there this point, when I cut where this point is represented in the Y and X, between Y and X, I'll see that there'll be equal distance there. Then if I cut between Y and, 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 and what, and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I can say Y and Z, you, I can, or maybe if I cut Y and Z, Y and X, I also see that there's a symmetry there, then I'll conclude that it's defined in what, in, for example, if the one which repeats itself the two, two times, you see, uh, the one which is, um, I can say is the one which is, which defines uh, the vector which you are going to use. So you are going to see when you look at the examples, you are going to see when you look, when you look at the examples, what I really mean when I say the symmetry. So for now, just know that when I'm talking about the symmetry, you must have two sides. When I cut something in the middle, I must have what? Two sides to be equal. Then when I talk about the invariance, invariance is um, according to the definition here, say C on distribution the charge a invariant par un changement de variable alors le champ électrostatique que produit ne peut pas dépendre de cette variable. So invariance is when I try to change, um, when I'm trying to change uh, A variable, for example, if I have a charge which is uh, causing an influence, for example, if just imagine that circle, you have a charge, that charge which is which was P on the circle, which is causing an influence in the middle. And if I try to change uh, that charge, and I see that there's no actually, um, uh, uh, there's uh, I can say that there's uh, the, there's no changing of, uh, I can say maybe there's no changing of the distance. For example, if I'm moving that charge around, if I'm moving that charge around the circle, if I'm moving that charge around the circle, you see that the, the radius, the radius between the center and the charge will never change. So you see that there will be no variance, there will be no changing in the distance. So you, that's what we call invariance, meaning there's no changing in the distance. And when there's no change in the distance, we say that, uh, that variable actually, for example, the radius actually has no influence. The radius has no influence on the charge. So this is uh, the phenomenon of the invariance. The variance will try changing the, the way I, I had explained uh, when we when we when we are doing the coordinates. The one uh, the way of had uh, explained that when you change this when you change this, this point to move it to another point, do you see any change or what what those is the same thing with the invariance. First of all, you try changing that point. If I change this point, do I see any change in the radius or what? Or, or is there, um, what is affecting this point? So you have to see what is affecting this charge which you are you, you are trying to calculate. Is it it moving around a circle or is it it moving outside the circle? So you have to see which one affects it. So if it is around the circle, see that the theta, yeah, we said that if it's moving around the circle, we said that the theta actually doesn't change. Uh, you know, the theta is the one which is changing, but the radius is what it is equal. So you see that the theta has no influence there because the radius will always be equal. But when I change this point, I move it to the outside circle, which is the bigger circle. You see that the radius will, what it, will increase. So we see that it, there, uh, there will be some change in there will be a variance. So when there is a variance, it means that that point is dependent on 
I can say uh, uh, that point is uh, uh, like the champ electric, the champ electrostatic is dependent on that variable. That variable, for example, the radius. If I change the radius, we know that everything changes. The, if I change the radius, it, it means that if the distance between O and M, if remember, it changes. But if I change uh, just the, the angle in which it's, the point is moving around the circle, you see that the angle really, really uh, doesn't, uh, the, 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 the radius doesn't really change between O and M, which means that the, angle, the, uh, the, the variable, which is the theta, uh, which denotes the angle, is not, doesn't really have an effect on the, um, yeah, on the uh, champ electrostatic. So those are the two things. So the symmetry and the invariance. So when you're talking about symmetry, is it, you'll be able to differentiate the two sides which are equal. Then when you're talking about the invariance, you see, you are finding which variable is causing an effect, which variable is what is causing an effect. And the, uh, after you find out the, the, the variable which is causing an effect, you see, the one which you, you are going to use in your work. Uh, when you're doing your calculation. So this one, symmetry and invariance, you should note that it's only used when there's a distribution of what it charges. So uh, on uh, here, I gave uh, an example on invariance. In invariance. So for example, if uh, you get, um, for example, imagine, you have this axe, which is what? Which is Z. Imagine this axe, this uh, axe, the Z axe, and you have a sphere. This is a sphere. So what happens when um, this axe is uniformly charged? This axe is what? Uniformly charged. So what happens when um, I'm turning ar around, like when this sphere is, turning around this axe. So what happens? So you see that this axe, the axe Z is in the middle of the sphere. So if I'm if I'm turning the sphere around this axe, which is uh, uniformly charged, you see that uh, the distance between the center of the axe and the, the periphery of, uh, or the, 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 the outer, um, uh, the out of the circle, the periphery of the circle, the inner out of the circle, you see that there will be no difference in distance. That's why I was saying that when you are when you are rotating a point around uh, something, you see that there will be no change in the distance. And when there is no change in the distance, here it says that it varies the distribution by rotation O2 during us, the sharpness depend the rapa, the angle key measure set rotation. So you see that there will be an invariance because when you're rotating, the distance is always what? The same. When you're rotating uh, the sphere around this axis Z, which is uniform charge, meaning everywhere is charged, you see that the distance, the radius will always be the same. And when the radius is always the same, it means that uh, there'll, be, there'll, be, there'll be no effect, there'll be no change in the, uh, in the sharp electrostatic. I don't know if you are getting me here. Hello? Yes. Yeah, you, you have a question? No, no, no. Yeah. So if you if you see here, you check. So uh, you have to you have to see does the rotation have a change in my um uh, in my uh the the in my attraction between uh the uh Imagine this sphere is charged and the Z is, is uniform charge. So when you try to rotate this sphere around this axis Z, you first, you first uh, observe, does, does it have any effect when I'm turning my body, my, 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 my seed in the, around this, uh, uh, this axis Z? You see that it, there'll be no effect because the distance will always be what the same when you are turning it. And when the distance is always the same, it means that eh, the champ does not depend on the angle key measure, key measure set rotation. So, so the champ doesn't depend on the angle, which is uh, measured by this rotation, because the rotation actually, when you're doing rotation, 
nothing really changes when you're doing a rotation around uh, something which is charged, the radius doesn't really want to change. So rotation does not affect. So what you should know first, under the invariance, you see that rotation doesn't affect the, um, uh, doesn't affect the sharp electrostatic because there will be no change. Invariance means there's nothing, no change in, in uh, the, I can say, in the, uh, uh, there will be no change in the attraction between uh, the two charges, which is around the cylinder and the, the axe. Then when also, when you also, example two is about what the translation, so translation. So imagine you have an axe Z, which is uniform charge. Uh, my drawing is not to scale. You have an axe Z, which is uniform in charge. So or uh, imagine uh, this, uh, uh, what, um, uh, you have uh, this cube here. Yeah, you have, yeah, you have this cube here. So this axis is uniform in charge. What happens if I'm moving this cube? Translation is I'm moving it up, down. If I'm moving this cube uh, up, down uh, in the x axis, if I'm moving it up, down, up, down, what will happen? You see that actually when I'm moving it up, down, since this axis is uniform in charge, it means that uh, the force which will be created on this cube will always be the same because it is, you know, when I say uniform charge, every, every part of this X is charged. So you see that when you're moving it up, down, up, down, there'll be no actual change in the word, in the, um, uh, there'll be, uh, the attraction will always be the same. And uh, since it is uniform charge, whether I go up, I go up, I, I go down, I go up, I go down, the, the the force will always be the same. This uh, uh, and uh, and this uh, brings us to the invariance because there'll be no variation. There'll be nothing which will really change. The the, the force will always be the same. When whether I move it up or down, the force will always be the same. There'll be nothing which will be changed. So I'll call this one. Uh, so this one is uh, I can say um uh, uh, this one uh, is uh, 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 you see that this one is uh, the, 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 there's I can say there's no there's no a variation in anything and which means that it's invariable invariable meaning it doesn't change it doesn't really change so when it is invariable it um uh, it at this distribution by translation we say that it doesn't the the sharp doesn't depend on the translation the sharp doesn't depends on uh, when, when when you are moving an object from like you are moving an object up down up down the sharp doesn't really depend on that one so if it doesn't depend on that one we eliminate so those in which it doesn't depend those which give us invariance we usually eliminate them we only uh, get uh, uh, the variables which cause an effect so if a variable doesn't cause an effect you eliminate it so there are two ways in which a variable cannot cause an effect. When you're doing rotation, a variable doesn't cause an effect. And when you're doing translation, a variable doesn't cause an effect. So this one should always be, you should always know that when you're, when you're moving in a circle, there's no influence. And when you're moving up and down, there's what? No influence. So uh, if you have a variable which makes a sort of a circle, you should know that that one doesn't have an effect on your uh, sharp electrostatic. And if you have seen a variable which is making a sort of a translation, which is moving up and down, you should know that that one also has no effect on the uh, on the sharp electrostatic. So basically, when you're talking about the invariance, you have to look or you have to search for which one doesn't affect my sharp electrostatic when I do the rotate when I do uh, the the when I do the movement. So you first check when I do the rotation, is there any change in the radius? You see that there's no change in the radius. Then you cancel it. You see that this one doesn't have an effect. If I do my transition, if I move this point up and down here, am I seeing any change? You see that there's no change. You say it's invariant, then you cancel it out. The one which you remain with is the one which is going to, is the one in which the sharp electrostatic is going to depend on and that one which is going to depend on is the one which you are going to represent this what 
this vector. So you have to check which one is it. Is it dependent on? So I don't know if there's any question or up to there. Anyone else any question? Is there anyone else any question? No, I think so. So now we're going to now look at practical examples. Practical examples. So under examples, that's when you understand more. So uh, symmetry and we are still on symmetry and invariance. So symmetry, example one, champ created by un fil if you need. So they're saying that a champ which is created by uh, un fil, un fil, uh, a line which is infinite, meaning this line, we have a line which is infinite, which is uniformly charged. So the champ which is created by what? Eh? By it. So they are saying that eh, you have, uh, so here, un fil, if you need uniform more charge, consider avec les at or z the coordinate symbol. So you have been given a coordinate symbol, and the coordinate symbol, you know, that is denoted by r, which is uh, just the same as rho, rho, theta, and z. So rho is the radius, which is r. So you can, if you want, you can present it in rho, if you want, you can present it in r. So it's r, theta, and z. Those are the coordinates which are defined cylindric. So when you're getting a sharp electric, electrostatic, you have to know in which one are you going to, to represent it. Is it uh, UR or U theta or UZ? You have to know which one am I going to represent my point. So here they're saying that, if you check here, they're saying that the plan O, UZ, UR, A, plan the symmetry, the la source, E theta, ne pas in chrome. Then the phi A, if you need the plan O, you are you theta it will also plan the symmetry is it the power in chrome so here if you check here there's you are and you are which is what repeating so it means that the then in here there's uh the, the other part you have you theta which is not included and the down part you have you z which is not included so when when you you are trying to find the uh, the vector which you are going to use you have to check which ones repeating. So you have to know um, uh, when you're doing your uh, your symmetry, you have to know uh, which one is repeating. And uh, if you know which one is repeating, it's the one which the vector which you are going to use. And for uh, if what uh, I can tell you, like for under the if you are using coordinate symmetry, U R S they always the vector which they usually use U R S the vector which they always use. So uh, this one don't need to find it to what you should just know by heart that when I'm using, when I'm told for the less the uh the UR, if I cut uh, under a vector you are a half a symmetry. And you should uh, this this is the thing which you should always put in mind that always you should be uh if it's codon syndric always is what you are and um you find that most most of the time when they are doing the calculation, they work, uh, they use UR as their vectors. And uh, to explain it in a diagram form, yeah, to explain it in a diagram form, for example, if the, the way they are, they, are, they, are, they are saying it, if you have this point M, this is the point M, so you have the ax, which is the infinity ax, which is infinity, and under the coordinate cylindric. So you have the vector use it, U theta and the UR. So you see that, and here is O. So you see that when uh, when I I when I got this, you have this uh, this what this uh, this cylinder. When I got it in, you see that when I got it in terms of UR and uh, and U theta, UR and U theta is. Uh, yeah, you are and you theta. If you see that uh, this angle is, is is making a z. Yeah, here they have just represented it in x and y. So if if you try to uh, cut uh, u x and u theta, if if yeah, imagine there's uh, like here there's a ninety degrees here. If I try to cut it in terms like this, in terms of yeah, in terms of, uh, if I try to cut it like this, 
you see that uh, since uh, we have said that this cylinder is if you need meaning uh, meaning that uh, this cylinder is, is is going and going it doesn't finish like the cylinder the field doesn't see so when I cut it in terms of here if I cut it here you see that the upper part is equal to the right to the down part even though it's I can say these things are really complicated but what I can just tell you is you just have to know that um, you just have to know that when you're dealing with coordinate cylindric, yeah, when you're dealing with coordinate cylindric, always the vector which you use is you are. You just know that always the vector which you use is what you are, which when you are dealing with the coordinate cylindric. Most of the times, I can say most of the times, the vectors which you use is what you are. That's what you should know. And uh, I'll send a video so that you can watch it and uh, you learn more about this so you have to uh you have to to be able to know uh which one which vector is being what which vector is uh i can say which vector is uh is um uh which vector is 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 responsible or which vector defines this sham so when you are when you are dealing with vectors uh when you're doing symmetry you have to know that the the vector which are denotes the sharp electro electrostatic is what is it? the uh, you are and here you have seen that there will be there is a repeating of what of you are uh, all uz you are and all uz or you you are you tell so you have seen that the the repeating of you are and the vector you are which is this vector here so if you try to uh, cut it u theta we have all u theta you are, if I try to cut it, you see that uh, if I try to cut it in U theta, you are and you are, you see that uh, there will be a plan of symmetry which will be what, which will be created here. And uh, I can say it's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's really difficult to see on this diagram because the diagram is, it wasn't really drawn uh, to scale, yeah. But uh, I wouldn't want you to waste more time. Like the, the, this diagram doesn't uh, really have a much importance. What you should just know is that when you're dealing with coordinate symbolic, your your what your vector, which most of the time your vector, which uh, is responsible for getting your sharp, is it? your U R N D. Uh, when you when when you go to the invariance, the invariance. When you go to the variance, um, the variance is the one which is uh, simple because when you go to the variance, you have got R, theta, and Z. So under this R, theta, and Z, which one you have seen that the vector is U R? Then which one, uh, if you try changing, it will have an effect on the cylinder. So you see that if I try to change theta, theta meaning if this point is moving around the cylinder. And you have an axe in between. What happens? It will, you see that when I try changing theta, there will be no influence. So um, yeah, I'll, yeah. So this one they started with Z. So I'll start with Z also. So when you are trying to change Z, what do you see? When you are trying to change Z, Z since we have said Z is vertical, so you have a a line which is uniform charge, which is denoted by P, and you have a Z. And if you, I try to move this point here, which is M, which is in the, I try to move it in the Z axis. You, if I try to move it up and down, and there's a line which is uniformly charged here, which is P, you see that there'll be no change. So you are, you are there'll be an invariant bar translation. So you see that there'll be no change, there'll be an invariant by what? Translation, if there's no change, it means Z can be canceled out. That's why I've seen here, they said invariant by transition cell on Z, which you have seen Z, I've canceled out Z. And from Z, I will now go to theta. To theta, if I try to move this point M here around the axe, which is in the middle P here, you see that there'll be no change in the what radius. So if there's no change in the radius, you, you say that there's invariant by transition cell on what theta. So there's no change in the what in the in the angle. So the, the yeah, the angle is what constant. So I'll cancel what the angle. Then the last one is what the radius. If 
this point, I try to move it outside. Like if I try to move it outside the cylinder, if I'm moving away from the cylinder, you see that uh, there will be somehow a change which will be denoted there because the distance between the the axe, which is P here, and the, the point here, it will, what, it will start uh, it will, it will start increasing. So you see that there will be variant, there will be variation by translation along what the X. So you know that if I'm moving translation along X, there will be what the, an invariant. So you see here that the, the two will cancel out and they'll just remain with what ER. So the ER, which I'm going to remain it, this is it. Uh, the champ is going to be calculated calculated is going to be defined by the radius r and it's going to be defined by what the vector what you are so if uh if you don't if you're not sure with the vector you are the best thing which you can do first is since when you find in the variance it's simple to find the variance what you can do first is to find your variance if you find your variance then you also know what your symmetry because if your variance is r meaning your vector is what you are so the simplest way for you to know your symmetry, your vector, which so for symmetry is to know the vector in which you are calculating in. And for um for invariance, you have to know the variable in which the your shampoo will be dependent on. So the variable in which your shampoo is dependent on is R, and the vector is what you are. But just by calculating the invariance first, you can be able to know that this is the symmetry. So here, since you have found that. Uh, you if you have found that your variance to be R, it means that your vector of the symmetry, your vector which you're going to use is what you are. I don't know if there's any questions there. Any questions? Under the variance. No. Okay. So uh basically um so for invariance you should know that uh, you have uh, you have uh, for for you to really know the for 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 what for the symmetry the what those things if you just know what your invariant what uh what what variables uh define your shape you can know the vector which you are using so for invariance, which is a simple way which you can know. So invariance, if you just know uh, which 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 ones are invariant in uh, by doing the transition along Z, the uh, transition along theta, and uh, also transition along X, you can know which one. So along Z, you know that if you transition moving up and down, there is no change in the radius. If you're moving around the circle, there's no change in the radius. So the Z and the theta is no inference, but if you're moving uh, slow X, you see that there will be a change in the radius, which means that your champ is denoted or is uh, defined by R, then you also know your vector. Then for a season, uh, uh, yeah, for a, for a sphere also is the same thing. For a sphere also is the same thing for you to, uh, for you to uh, to know is what to know is symmetry or to know its rotation, you have to know uh, its invariance. Also, you have to know its invariance also. So for um, for sphere, you know that a sphere it has got uh, two circles. There's a circle which is uh, the horizontal circle. If you remember the our sphere, there's a horizontal circle, and there's also what. A lateral circle, a lateral circle, like a circle which is cutting this small horizontal circle which is on top. And you see that when a point is moving around the small horizontal circle which is on top, there will be uh, no change in the radius. There will be no change in the radius uh, between the uh, the center which is Z and the circle which is moving on on the top circle. There will be no change. And if you are moving this point around the circle which is that right. You see that there will be no change also in the radius, which is from the center to here, there will be no change. So you see that the two angles, the theta, you see that the theta and the, the you see that the theta and the what the um yeah, the side, the, the phi, the theta and the phi, they have 
no effect. So if they have no effect, you are just remaining with it, the error. So if you try to move away from this sphere, you are trying to move away from this sphere, you see that the distance between here, it will, it will increase. So it means that it means that the theta and the, the phi has no effect, but the, but the error has what an effect. That's why you see here, I've canceled out the theta and the phi, which has no effect. The R is the one which has effect. So you have your ER, which is, yeah, ER, uh, yeah, ER, uh, open bra brackets, R, close brackets. So you see that it's denoted by what? R, and if it's denoted by R, you know that the vector which is going, which you are going to use is what? You are. So this is, if you know your invariance, Automatically, you know your symmetry. So you have just to know your invariance, your symmetry. You, you won't have any difficulties with your symmetry. So when you're given a sphere, when you're given a cylinder, when you're given all those things, you just have to um, to know the coordinates, which, which uh, you have to know the coordinates spheric, what are, which ones are coordinates spheric. So you have to know that coordinates spheric is R, theta, and the phi. Then you have to know the coordinates cylindric. So it depends which coordinate have they given you. That's how you're going to, uh, to do your, uh, uh, that's how you're going to, uh, I can say, that's how you're going to, uh, to, to find your symmetry and your variance. First, you have to know the coordinate which you have been given, which you are supposed to use. And after knowing the coordinate which you are supposed to use, try to uh, play with this coordinate and see if, try to imagine the diagram of a sphere and see that if this coordinate is does it give me any change if i try to change this and this coordinate so if you if you are able to know this you won't have really have i can say you won't really have any problems with uh, uh when you're getting a shamp uh which is created by a shamp which is created by a distribution in uh in a for example in a form spheric, in a form cylindric, you won't have any problem. So see, symmetry and invariance is basically used, is basically used under when you have distribution of charges. Then the sham create a plan if you need uniform charge aligned so the plan or x y. So there is a sham which is created. Uh, by a plan which is uniform charge and yes, so the plan or x y. So you have this this plan here, which is uniform charged. The champ which is created. So here is the same thing here. The champ which is created. So you see here that it is. Uh, you have your um, you have your z, your x, and the, your y, and the, uh, this is your plan here. If you see here, your, your plan is in the uh line part and you see that if you I have a point here for example imagine uh imagine you have your point here m this is a point here m imagine you have a point here m uh you see that if i try to move this point parallel to the y axis you see that the the the, the distance between this point and the y axis if i'm moving parallel there'll be no change in the distance between the uh between this plan here and this point here and if i try to move it to this side also there'll be no change in uh the distance between your your, your x here and your plan here and your m here but if i try to move it up you see that the distance between the plan which is down here and at this point it will be the distance will always what be increasing so you see that if you are given in a form of uh, a plan which is not a circle which is not a sphere you have to know that uh, when you are moving this point sideways parallel you see that there will be no effect in the x and the y axis the only effect which you observe is what the z axis that's why you have seen here that uh, um they have cancelled your x and your y they have just remained with your z so if you know that your invariance is z your vector also which you are going to use is what use it so this is how you you are able to know which vectors you are going to use which uh uh under distribution when you're creating the champ which vectors are going to use uh, you, are, you are you are going to calculate it in 
which variable, which is the z variables. Yeah, that's that. Uh, that's how we are going to calculate it. Then the the x and the the y they don't have an effect. I don't know if there's any question up to there. So it's just the same thing that we have. Any questions? I think that's that's the end. Any questions? No question. Mm, okay, so um, yeah, so I'll send the video so that you can watch it and uh, yeah, and this one also pass pass through it, pass through it, the video. The, yeah, if you don't understand anywhere, just uh, yeah, just inbox me, and the, I'll send I'll send the video which explained it very very clearly, which is in French. Yeah, which is in French. I'll send the video to you guys so that you can just pass through it. Just the symmetry and the invariance, since you so that you have a clear view, a clear view about the symmetry and invariance. If you know how to uh, come out with the symmetry and the invariance, you won't really have any difficulties in anything. Yeah. So I can see, I can say that's the end of our lesson. Yeah, I will try to send some questions. Yeah, those questions you are just going to try them if you want you can send it to me i check them or if you want yeah so i'll send some questions so that you can try them and uh yeah the symmetry the watch you try solving it using the symmetry and all that yeah okay okay then have a good day that's the end so for me is we are done with the lesson yeah we're done with the electricity the two the the three parts which you are remaining with uh they're not really difficult they are just the same things yeah so just try to pass through your notes, your also watch through the videos and try to understand the things. Yeah. Have a blessed day and enjoy the rest of your lessons. All right. Thank you. Same to you.